Good morning, Wildcats. Welcome back. Today we are going to take a look at a career in which you have to have a mass education, but the reward goes beyond that of any monetary value. As well as an inside look at a former Razorback who's taking a different approach on and off the court. Today is February 3rd, 2015. And you're watching Harbor Wildcat News. One of the career fields who have the highest dropout percentage is the medical field. However, the few people who make it through get the reward of a lifetime. 13 hours and 60 patients a day, that is a typical week for a doctor. Medical professionals are constantly on the clock with patients, but in most cases, it's not the doctor who gets to dictate their day. Uh, a typical day is atypical. Everything changes and you're waiting to see what's uh, going to come in and uh, I'll uh, look at the schedule kind of get an idea of what to expect as best I can um, and then um, just you know listen to the patient and and um, follow uh, kind of follow their lead. Students who are looking to get into the medical field have opportunities here at Harper High School to get a jump start on their career and to be able to take a first-hand look at what to expect in the future. I feel that um, our courses are very valuable as far as um, getting the student prepared for uh, medical careers and also giving them a glimpse into different medical career uh, careers that they might choose. We have a class called Medical Terminology, which is the same class that they teach in college, and it teaches all the medical work terms so that they will be um, ahead when they get to college. Currently, in Medical Procedures 2, we're learning about dental, um, and we're learning all the names of all the teeth and the procedures of how to um, some dental procedures and the different types of dentistry. One of the most renowned characteristics of doctors are that they obtain more education than any other profession, but you just might be surprised that it's more than recall memory and complex problem solving. As far as education wise, students can expect lots of, it's, it's more the volume of inf information that you have to know rather than the, how complex it is. You know, it's the level of memorization of information and, and it's, it can be quite, quite a large amount of information that you have to know. For some, the goal is money, but for others, the satisfaction of knowing you made a difference in someone's life is enough. I think the most rewarding thing about my job is to be able to do, do something for someone when they're not able to repay you for what you're doing for them. Sometimes it's just as simple as being able to uh, reassure a new mother or to help a family member say goodbye to someone in the last hours of their life. Whatever career you choose to strive for, education is always a key factor in obtaining your dreams. For HBWN, I'm Gustavo Ariza. It's great to see so many students taking an interest in demonstrating their servant heart. With hard work and dedication, they will be able to enjoy the career of a lifetime. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but stay tuned for our spotlight on a very young news crew and an inspiring story on a returning Razorback. Don't change the channel. We'll be right back. We're more than grades! We're more than grades! A young group of students who might just replace us in the very near future are starting their experience in the news field very early in their lives. With no child left behind, Common Core, and more than a grade initiatives, education is evolving from more than just classroom work, and for some students, it starts at a very early age. With new guidelines set in the district, students are expected to be more self-sufficient. Shaw Elementary developed a news production for their school. The students love the news. Um, it just tells everybody what's going on. It's interesting because it's kind of grown to um, where they depend on the news now to tell them the lunch menu and what to wear the next day or how cold it's going to be. And they also just love hearing the different reports. Some of them are on other students at the school and things that they're doing. The anchors for Shaw Elementary are fifth graders and are already learning a lot of responsibility. News is something I want to do when I grow up because it's fun and it gives you responsibility. 
The news at Shaw is important to me because um, it kind of helps you like um, get involved. Not only is the news production teaching responsibility, but also that students are gaining friendships that are going to last forever. Shaw Star News is important to me because I get to be with my friends and I get to, and I get to be funny on camera. A news production takes a lot of dedication and hard work, but the teachers at Shaw are willing to take the time to teach their students the skills they will need to succeed. You know, this wouldn't happen unless we had a lot of dedicated teachers, especially Ms. Herrera. And she spends a lot of time with them, teaching them to edit, um, making sure they get their stories done in time. Um, yes, they're independent, but it's always nice to have that teacher that's challenging them to do more. These unique students will someday be the face of our very own television production program here at Harbor. For HBWN, I'm Amber Carnish. I can't wait to see what the future holds for not only these students, but our very own broadcasting program. In other news, a former University of Arkansas graduate is returning to the U of A to lead a very determined and talented team to success on the court. With over 950 games, in 3,000 practices, over 20 years of experience coaching, the women's Arkansas basketball team is more than privileged to have a coach with these kinds of stats. But his presence here at the University of Arkansas is felt much deeper than just being a head coach. When I played here for Eddie Sutton, um, now this is a guy that we had the words dedication, discipline, and defense on our practice gear, and I, those words are pretty important to me as well right now as a head coach, just to be uh, dedicated to what we're doing, dedicated to what we're doing on this practice floor every day and what we're doing off of it, uh, have discipline about what we're doing in our life, how we play the game of basketball, and then, of course, defense. That's one of the reasons why we've had the success that we've had so far this season is we're a pretty good defensive team. We emphasize that it's important to us. So I think I, those three words are a big core of who I am. Learn those from him. Dedication, discipline, and defense. These three words are not the only thing that have impacted his coaching career. There is something much more that could be attributed through his 30 years under seven different programs. Well, all those years I worked for ESPN, I was blessed to go around and watch over 3,000 practices across the country, so I've seen a lot at the high level. Uh, so I think we run a good practice. You know, we try to be organized with what we're doing. We try to have energy every day with what we're doing. He's very passionate. Um, he, he knows what he wants and he does a good job of letting us know that he wants us to be fighters and he wants us to play hard no matter what the circumstance, whether we're winning or whether we're losing. And so we know he expects that from us and so we've, we've grown to expect that from each other too and that's one thing I'm grateful for. I think we know that no matter what the scoreboard says, if we fought our best and we fought as hard as we could, we can go in the locker room proud of how we, how we played. His passion is carried through one philosophy that the entire team can identify with, family. And it is through this that the senior leaders on the team have learned two valuable lessons. I think one of the big things is um, relying on each other, but it's also understanding that, you know, the freshman coming in or the sophomore, we need to let them know that we understand what they're, where they're coming from uh, because we were in their shoes once. Never forget why you started playing. Never forget your love for the game because that's what's going to drive you. That's what drives Coach D. His love for the game is what drives him to be here all the time, to have all the staff meetings and to, you know, take time out of his life to do this because of his love for the game. I hope, I hope this first year uh, when the fans watch us play, whether we win or lose, I think they walk away. I know they do. Thinking, man, I love watching those young ladies play. They, they, they play hard. They have a lot of passion. They have a lot of fight about them. And if we get that going our first year like we have and we continue to have that going, then we've had a great first year. We've made a lot of progress since I've taken the job over in those areas. I'm really, really proud of my, my players. You see them out here working beside me right now. You know, they, they, they put in the extra time. They really care. That means a lot to me. I trust their, I trust their effort and I trust their heart. The community has certainly connected with Coach Jimmy Dykes being that he was a former Razorback and a graduate of the U of A. Being on the road or here at home, Jimmy Dykes will always represent what hard work and dedication can bring to a team. For HBWN, I'm Jade Nash. His unique approach to the style that the Lady Razorbacks are now playing has definitely impacted them both on and off the court. To see Jimmy Dykes and the Lady Razorbacks in action, be sure to catch their next home game Monday, February 9th as they take on the Georgia Bulldogs at Bud Walton Arena. That's all we have for today. Be sure to catch us back in two weeks as we keep you up to date on all things Harbor Wildcats. For HBWN, I'm Amber Carnish. And I'm Jade Nash. Put a smile on.